Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag W A W What a we And we are on. You know, the way I see it, we're like those gaps between load shedding that widen when the stage changes. A bit strange to see, a bit weird to be happy for, but hopefully just as welcome. So before the power goes out, let's get straight into it. Welcome to another edition of Wow, What a Week. This is... Wow! What a week. What a week. You can't make this shit up. Shit up. Welcome to Wow, What a Week. We've been expecting you. Our guest is in the building. Rumor of his demise have been exaggerated. Even if you were invited to his funeral, though, all that you might be greeted with are cucumber sandwiches and sugarless rooibos tea without milk. What a legend. And before that day arrives, we thought we'd grab him for a chat. Please give a wow welcome to the resurrected Mr. Trevor Kumbi. <laughs> dude, oh, fresh. Dude, dude, Love how, you so much, bro. How often has social media killed you? Was it just <laughs> once? Oh, that's what you're refer- referencing. Yes. They've killed me so many times. Uh, I think three. Officially, no, possibly more than three. There was a one time I was just chilling at home and yeah. then I heard that I've died on the road to Sun City for the Safters. You are kidding. Yeah. Yeah. How do, how do these death rumors about you affect family? You know what? The first time it was really, really bad. Yeah. And um, because the first time it happened, my mom heard about it. Jeez. And uh, my mom is blind. So there's certain steps to all of this thing. You can imagine a person living on their own, getting this kind of news. Mm-hmm. And, and having the disability of not being seen, like, it was bad for her, you know? Jeez, she had to yeah. be calmed down, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I had to go there, like, yeah, I'm actually alive. So, yeah, it wasn't funny. It's not, it's not ever funny, is it? Sure. Yeah, yeah. But no, it does affect. I, yeah. I wonder where it comes from, though. Is it people who want us dead? Don't say us. I haven't had one yet. You haven't? No. I should start <laughs> one. When was the last time you saw Fresh Alive? He's here. Right? Now, we're also speaking to a boxer on the show today. But I almost feel like you should be walking in listening to Eye of the Tiger because of how much shit you've been through. It's the Eye of the Tiger. It's the thrill of the fight. Rising up to the challenge of our rivals. It's a fun song to sing. Hashtag, I went to a school with white children. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Fresh, you know what, man? It it, it is tough, man. And uh, we do seem to have resurrected a couple of times. And um, it's... um, it's the strength of our convictions, you know? Yeah, we, yeah. we set out to do something in our careers. And mm-hmm. when I say us, I don't mean just you and I. I also sure. mean the entrepreneur watching from, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. from a, a, a board meeting gone wrong, um, the teacher whose class is half failing, you know? Yeah. We, we set out to do the right thing with a certain purpose. Mm-hmm. But there, there are things that come in the way of us achieving those things. Sure. And we get really down on ourselves and we forget to count the simple blessings mm. that we have. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. I might be cold right now. I might be hungry. Your barista made me coffee with no tea. I mean, coffee with no sugar. But I'm not complaining about that. Did you, did, did, you, did you ask for sugar? I, I did ask. Please but may we have some sugar? No, it's fine. No, no, we're going to give you sugar. He decided he doesn't want to. I'm not going to let no, him not. and his sugar keeping... No, he must bring you sugar. Because next thing you're going to say, he puts the bari in barista. No. Uh, No. So uh, we will get you sugar. Is he a barista or a coffee maker? He will answer for himself when he uh, gets on set. Oh, okay. My so, dude, yeah, these go. things happen uh, uh, yeah. uh, fresh, but let's, let's not uh, let them get to us, yeah. In fact, when I spent the most amount of time with you, it was at your wildest. Is this sugar? It's sugar and a spoon. And a serviette. Thank yet. you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. The, the time I spent a lot of time with you at your wildest. Um, you know, the one night we were in the club, 
and you know we were we'd had a bottle of champagne and as I was about to pour myself another glass of champagne, I'm told, don't, Trevor peed in the bottle. Like, those were your wild, like, days. Those were days where you disappear from home for days on end. During that period in your life, when you look back... <laughs> do you ever look back and say, how did I survive <laughs> right. myself? Right. And how did my family survive me during that period? Oh, fresh. Wow. Okay. Okay. The last part of that question yeah. really hit home. Yeah. Um, because it was funny when you said, how did I survive all of these things? And I need to correct you. That sure. bottle of champagne, you were only told after you took a swig. So. Uh, <laughs> so Are you saying I drank your pee? Yeah. Yeah. What? So that's why I'm like, how did I survive that? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, it's amazing the things we've survived. Sure. It, it, it's truly amazing. And I really put... Uh, God on the line. That man was saving me from things on a daily occurrence, and sure. I shouldn't be alive today. Mm -hmm. it's, it's through the grace of God. Um, I shouldn't have been peeing in uh, champagne, bottles. champagne bottles, but I've got a, there's reason to the madness, okay? Besides the, uh, the I'll, point I'll, that I'll, I was I'll messed wait. up. I'll wait. It's, it's, I wasn't famous, you were famous, and the only way for me to get to you is by you going, to the bouncers and then letting me in. Yeah. If I leave to go pee, then I come back, the bouncers are gonna be like, ah. And then I have to wait for, to get your eye level, eye nod. So is that why you peed in the champagne yeah. bottle? Yeah, But then, yeah. you say, how did I survive that? I did, don't know how. How did my family survive that? Yeah. I don't think they did. Mm. You know what I mean? Are you still counting the cost of that behavior? Absolutely, bro. Yeah. Absolutely. How? How does it... Like I'll, al I'll always have to pay the cost of the things that I did mm. because I am an addict, sure. you know? Mm. I'm a recovering addict. For the rest of your life? Yes. Yeah. Just because I'm not using it anymore, just because I'm not in active addiction doesn't take away the title of addict, you know? Um, I'm labeled addict because of... The, 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 the lengths I would go to to get drugs and um, how I would lie to family and friends to get it, you know? Mm. So that label will stick, mm. you know what I mean? I don't think they've, they, they've, they've survived because the relationship is not there any longer. You know, we speak and stuff like that, but the trust is gone. Mm. And I always have to gain back that trust. You know what I mean? Mm. Because mm. it's like apologizing to your girl. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. An apology is just that. It's an apology. Sure. But a real apology is changed behavior. Yeah. So that's what I have to try to do. Mm. I have to show fresh that, you know what, I'm not that guy anymore. It's okay for you to hang out with me. Yeah. And it's okay for you to take calls from me longer than two minutes. Remember the last time I called you fresh? You hung up. I didn't hang up. After a minute and 32 seconds, We were done you speaking. Hung up. We were done. I wasn't done. But what did you call, not call back then? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. No, but like... The thing I love about you, though, yeah. is that, dude, because uh, now all the memories are coming back. It's like, oh, it's fresh. It's such a big deal. And like I've known you for years, well, known of you for years. And then when I finally got to meet you, I'm like, whoa, he's massive and he's so tattooed. But then you did something that I noticed that night. Yeah. You know that you're big and scary. Mm. You know your legend follows you. Mm. So you are larger than life. And what you do when people get that strength to come up to you, you become like a teddy bear and you always hug people. Mm. You bring them close, like small little ladies, oh, hey, big dudes, hey. You know what I mean? Mm. That's the thing about you because you know that you look like this. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that about you. You make people feel safe and comfortable. Sure. You're like a teddy bear. It's important to do that. Right. Yeah, it's very important to do that. Yeah. Now, you lost your first marriage. Lost? Let's not... Okay, you fucked up your first marriage. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> oh, it was my fault, eh? <laughs> okay, so it wasn't your fault. Okay, so you were falsely accused of fucking up your first marriage. Thank you, bro. Thank you. So are you still looking for redemption, or you've given up on uh, proving yourself right? Are you like O.J. Simpson looking for the real killers? <laughs> <laughs> Is he? And, whoa! O.J. Damn. Damn. OJ's Just because the glove didn't fit? No, O.J. is still looking for the real killers. Damn. 
Exactly. No, no, I take, I take full accountability, man. Mm. It does take two to mess something good up. Sure. And it did take more than two mm. to mess this good up on both ends, you know. Mm. Uh, we ha we've had to stay friends for the sake of the children, sure. which is a good thing. Mm. But, yeah, uh, marriage is not, it's an institution, as you know, but it's not the be-all and end-all. If it's not working, try to find your happiness, because that's the be-all and end-all, our happiness. What compromises did the two of you have to make for the sake of the children? Because often in a divorce, we forget that they're still children, ah. but we start being the childish ones. <laughs> because we're angry or we're upset or we're hurt, forgetting that these little people are looking to both of us to be fully functional human beings. Absolutely. But because we're trying to rip our, each other apart, that's not in the best interest of the kids. What compromises did the two of you have to make in your co-parenting? I'm glad you brought that up because it means that you've taken accountability for insisting on keeping the honey farm. Uh, your kids could have done with that. <laughs> I mean, it's bees, fresh. Why do you want to be known as fresh? What are bees? Because they're the bees knees. Bro. <laughs> it's stupid, bro. <laughs> it's stupid. I think the compromises that we've put in place is uh, our pride. Mm. Because that's all there is. Sure. That's all there is. The only thing that will stop you from uh, creating a safe space for your children is your own pride because it doesn't cost a thing to put the kids first. Yes. You know, I'm mm. sure you do it. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, that's the only reason you must be cordial, if anything. Yeah. That yeah. you still have these little people to, exactly. ac to account to. Exactly. But you're also an open book about your struggles, about your journey. Right. Where's the fine line between. It's none of your business, and I'm willing to share this. You see, um, I'm an open book because it helps me. It's cathartic for me to speak about the things I've, I've gone through. Yeah. And for me, my comedy is an equation of pain plus time. Oh, yes. So I've had to experience it. I've had to have time to deal with it yeah. in order for me to speak about it. And the more I speak about it, the different it comes out on stage, and it helps me heal, and hopefully there's somebody in the audience who also feels the same way mm. so I speak about it in those times you say where is the line where yes. do you draw the line mm. the line can be drawn for me personally yes, because sir. I speak about things that have happened to me mm. when I speak about the hurts I've experienced in relation in my relationship with my ex mm. I've been told I've been told to remember not to mention her name oh yes because that would be uh, Babies are on that thing. Come on, man. What were you sued for? Come on. No, no, I think I did the suing. You did the suing for? It was a def defamation. There, you, you can't yeah. even say it. Yes, it's just so, I'm so glad you've got lawyers who can no. actually pronounce defamation I, I, I and then the defamation. And, and, and I won. Did you? Anyway, carry or did on. did you win? Oh, well, Money. for them to shut the fuck up. Oh. Yeah. But that's called a protection order. Come no, on. No, no, there's man. that. But the, the other one is still coming. We're letting them put that guard down <laughs> and then we come back again. You see, then uh, at 10 past four. <laughs> <laughs> you bomb. <laughs> 10 past four. 10 minutes after, uh, uh, what, what, what do you when they put the candles up? What, the prayer? Man, people put up candles. What, to, me meditation. I remember, hopefully yes. I remember. But what a life. What a life, Fresh. Look at us, standing, still standing. Constantly judged. But you haven't answered the question. So, so you've been advised I not to mention her name because it. what? Oh, that was the line that, uh, that I've drawn. Okay. I can't go past that line. Ah, um, okay. So you can talk about yourself, yes. but don't uh, drag other people into your story. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Yes, because it's my lived truth. Yes. If I was cheated on, mm. I will speak about what it's like to be cheated on. Mm. But it's unfair mm. for me to say, Utato, mm. one gains us all. Ah, I hear you. you. Know? I hear you. Yeah. So I've got you, more than one act. So you, so you leave it legally open, <laughs> is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Spoke about who? Finding love again. Let's talk about that. So nice. And and and, at what stage do you realize that okay, this is real? And because you're the guy that wears his heart on his sleeve. Right. At what stage do you realize that okay, this is real? I can wear my heart on my sleeve again. Uh huh. Yeah. When was the time yes. I, I realized yes. that this is real? Because it's this been one? three years now, right? Yeah. 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 More than three, just more than three years. 
I think that when I realized that she was the one mm -hmm. was when I had nothing and I was broke. Yeah. And where were you living at that stage? Divorce house. Ah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I call it the divorce house because it's the house I moved into during my separation. Uh, and your, I was, little, your little nest, basically. I was little. I was very much in my ego then. I was like, oh, you want to kick me out of our house? Watch what I do. Yes. Ah, five bedrooms and hey, and one man. One man. Ah, sliding one man doors. And his there, ego. There was a sliding <laughs> door leading to a sliding door. For no reason, there was a sliding door and then not even a step in. There's another sliding door. I was like, I've got two sliding doors. Yes. Yeah. You don't have one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do I get to the sliding door, Trev? Through the one sliding door. door. And then I turn around, I close the one sliding door, and then I approach the second door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but honestly, it was when I was comfortable not having anything with her. Yeah. And we just sat eating chicken feet. Yeah. I forget what it was. Mm. It was, a, I was. I was comfortable when I was like, I've got nothing to offer you. Yeah. And she was like, you are everything to offer. At, at your most naked, she still saw yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I, not figuratively. Well, both. She couldn't avoid the one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can never. Or, or, or are you the lights off first kind of guy? I'm, I'm the lights off first kind of guy. I, I don't like my naked body. I mean, it's changing now. Is it because you're a grower or are you still a show? I'm a grower. Oh, okay. So the lights must uh, be off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't like to be fully, fully naked. Like, give me a, something, a plaster on my hand or something, but something must be covered. Yeah. Can't just be. Hey, look. It's like, sorry, baby, I will show uh, you my nipples later. These yeah. pastas are here for now. <laughs> you had uh, some very emotional posts on your social media. Um, when? Ago, I think you are in hospital. Um, take us through that. When I was in hospital? Well, no, I think you're talking about when my wife was in hospital. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We're, oh. talk we're, we're talking about love a second time around. <laughs> so... <laughs> She hurt herself, broke her fingers, right? Mm. I'm at work and uh, I get to her and uh, she's in the hospital. Uh, I'll, we'll go back to the story about how she hurt herself. Yes. But it was, um, I had nothing to post now. Like, uh, like uh, there's no caption. She's in the hospital bed and I was like, oh, my wife, oh, she's a mom. And I was thinking, oh, what if my mom gets hurt? Then uh, Tupac's Dear Mama came on and it's like, I posted the lyrics to Dear Mama. Mm. And then people are like, oh my God, his wife's on her, her deathbed. I'm like, no, it's Tupac. Come on. <laughs> Tupac was saying, and, oh, newspapers were like, Trevor says farewell to his wife on her deathbed. But, but are you surprised at how people might have interpreted it, though? Yes. Why? I thought everybody knew Tupac's lyrics. Who oh, Dear Mama. <laughs> Every year during Mother's Day. Come on. Everyone from Glenn Lewis to Tato will play Dear Mama, and you are telling me you don't know the lyrics. The last time I played Dear Mama for Mother's Day was on Studio Mix in 1999. Yeah, never, but, you've also not, but you've also not been gayfully employed in a long time, so let's not go there. It's just two years. Oh. Yeah, it's just two oh, years. Your savings were enough, doggy? <laughs> My man. Uh, enough have you gotten rid of enough at least one Harley? Uh, yes, I have, actually. Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, That's okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, oh, I was I, joking. I, I wasn't riding it, so I had to go anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Too bad. Anyway, so that post was much ado about nothing, is what you're saying? Yeah. What happened was we've got this water feature yeah. at the house. So, you're back at a double door house now? No, we bought a new house uh, okay. last September. It's, uh, yeah. Cool. And then, so water feature is a fountain. When we got there, it wasn't working. So, it's a. Uh, it's not a water fountain anymore, it's a fountain, okay? And then my wife's like, we've got enough water, there's a pool, there's taps. Let's make a fire pit. I was like, okay, baby. So she's gone on Pinterest at night in bed, looking at all these things yeah. and thinking about the water fountain, the water feature. So I leave for work in the morning, then she gets busy with the water feature. Mm. She pulls it off, the ball, doesn't weigh anything. It's a ball where the water comes out and then that doesn't weigh anything. So she's like, oh, confident, throws that. But the second level is all concrete. 
and she hit it, and it fell on her fingers, crushing all the fingers. Jeez, so, yeah, she, yeah. so, so she can't jack you off with that uh, hand. Dude, come on, who, who gets jacked off with the left? It's right only, come no, on. No, no, but left because it feels like someone else's hand. No, because the left must cradle it, and oh, then, and then okay. the right does okay. all the good work. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Can't believe I'm teaching Fresh how to cradle a penis. Um, then she <laughs> broke all her fingers. So then she drives herself to the hospital yeah. and she tells me on the way and then I call her mom, I call my mom and they're like, what did he do to her? I'm like, I was at work, what the fuck do you mean? Yeah. Then she's like, oh, she's not that stupid, right? I'm like, she is. Are you using again? <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, I never physically hurt anybody, mm. ever. I might start now because I want to start in the UFC now. It's about time I <laughs> put these abs whippings to work. I want to challenge anybody out there to a UFC fight, bare knuckle fight, just you, me, knees, shins, and ankles. Can, can you fight with your ankles? I, I can't fight with my ankles. I made a girl who can take her panties off with her ankles, hands free. And you married her? No, man, oh. you don't talk about my wife like that, Fresh. <laughs> okay, I'll keep your wife out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, keep my wife out of your mouth, and I'll keep this out of your mouth. <laughs> Stupid, bro. <laughs> this is so much fun having you out here. This is nice. In fact, speaking of using again, I mean, you, you talk... No, thanks. No, no, you, no. Talk, you, you talk about the fact that, you know, as a, an addict, even when you've stopped using... You're an addict until you die. Yeah. Because there's triggers everywhere. Yeah. There's tequila shots, there's this, there's that. There's guys using next to you sometimes. On a scale of one to 10, how difficult is it not to jump back in? Because you work in an industry where people use. Uh, difficult? Yeah. Uh, uh, from zero to 10. Yes. 10 being the, the most difficult. Yes. Yeah. Zero. So you're done, done, done. I'm done, done, bec not because there are no urges yes. to use and no triggers mm. there. I just know why I don't. Ah. I don't because of my loved ones. Oh, yes. I'm still working on a relationship with my siblings and my mother, and I've got a good relationship with my wife, and, I, and I've got a good relationship with all my children, mm. those that I know of. Mm. And um, it's going well, and I sure. don't want to jeopardize that. Ah. So that's the reason I don't. So I'm sure. happy not using. You okay, know? so you're at a stage where you've run out of I'm sorry's because now it's changed behavior that matters. Ah, oh, top. I've run out of my sorry's. Yes. That's you, very you, cool. You've used them up. Yeah. And, and often a sorry becomes a crutch. That's where you run to when you fucked up, as opposed to, I'm not going to apologize. I'm going to show you that I've changed. I'm going right. to show you that things are so different. So it's easier just to run and say, oh, I'm sorry. You know me. A lot of us do that. We think uh, I'm sorry will fix it. No. When all this person is asking for is, c can you act differently? Can you be different? Can you show me you're sorry? Don't tell me. To the people who've harmed you, yeah. I'm not talking about physical. There's sure. nobody who can possibly harm you physically. What, what will it take mm -hmm. for you to forgive them? 100% forgive. Your name has been dragged through the mm. mud. Mm. You've dra been dragged through courts. Mm. You've been dragged through the public court of opinion. Mm. What will it take for you to forgive your accuser and stop trying to mm. gag her? Mm. Say, speak your story, mm. true or not, mm. but it's not going to affect me. What's it going to take? Uh, for me to forgive anyone, it has to be not necessarily an apology, mm -hmm. but an acceptance of the fact that you lied or you were wrong. Oh. Yes. Uh, otherwise, I'm petty as fuck. You know a person knows that they're lying, right? Uh, unless, yes. unless it's a... Uh, no, no, they, they know they're lying, but, also, it, but also if you can prove they're lying because you've got evidence of where you were when they say you were at a certain place, ah. you see, ah. then therein is the difference. Have you forgiven? Um, I have forgiven. Who's interviewing here? Here, like who's showing? No, no. This? It's important to know because uh, I look up to you, yeah. you and and uh, most of Africa. In fact, it's it's not even about a forgiven. I feel sorry for anyone that 
feels the need, whether it's for attention or for whatever else, or because they were being, um, you know, hot air was being blown up your skirt and being told, don't worry, we support you, we support you, therefore you can maintain this uh, charade uh, or this lie. Um, I feel sorry for people like that. Mm -hmm. So I pray for people like that, that they find peace. Because clearly you don't have peace if you feel that's something that you need to do or that's something that gives you some sort of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not even about the, the whether I forgive you or not. Right. Yeah. And it's not about, and it's not even about whether or not I am going to seek the justice I deserve. Because that I will. You know, that I will. Uh. You know what I mean? But um, so for you to sum it, uh, sorry, to get it right. Yeah. For you, yeah. it's not about being sorry, uh, uh, lying or not. Mm. For you, the thing is, you must prove yourself that the accusation is totally unfounded. I think, to a certain extent, sometimes that's all you have left to do. That's You've all lost you enough. Sometimes that's all you can do for yourself or ah. for your loved ones, ah. for instance. You know what I mean? So, for instance, for my loved ones, I even did a polygraph test to show, oh my. That, to show that this is actually all bullshit. Oh, my. I exactly. You know what I mean? But obviously, you can't say I've done a polygraph test, therefore, people don't give a fuck about that. So, I did it for myself. Ah. And also just because maybe you don't remember. I don't know. But like I said, we sometimes you go to certain extents. You've gone to lengths then. Yes, yes. No, no, it's not yet. easy, polygraph. You can't just walk out and be like, you can polygraph. Exactly. Then, uh, exactly. Okay. So, 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 so three, gotta. No. Uh, after the yogurt lady there and the empty cassette guy. No, no, no. So you... So, so, so you for are me, old, dog. So, so for me... The empty cassette. <laughs> <laughs> empty cassette. We were going so well here. You said frozen yogurt. I'm like, okay, he's hip to the new desserts. Then you said empty cassette. I was like, mm, I'm Dude, dealing with an old guy here. We're down the road from Small Street. I, uh, I'm sure there's a guy still selling empty cassettes there. Anyway, this isn't an interview of me. <laughs> we're still talking about you. You were saying. About? You were answering the question. Oh, wow. This is a very strange <laughs> ornament to have on the table. Do you know that every single comedian has a problem with my piece of art? Oh, yeah? And it's a piece of art. How? What do you mean, how? Well, Look at it. Look at the detail. Look at the intricate attention to detail and what's been paid to this thing. If there was intricate... Uh, attention to detail, it would look like a real car with real people. It looks like somebody with all four major signs of retardation created this. So does this look like Rasta was given... Whoa! <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Are you saying this looks like Rasta was given clay? Yeah. Wow. And please don't get me wrong, everyone watching, uh, disabled people... And, are, and, and, uh, and we, are, and we disabled don't... people are very capable of creating art. I mean, look at PH. Oh, wow. He's the most successful Down Syndrome DJ there is. Oh, wow. And I love what he's done with his condition. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yo, Pindi, I love you, my dude. <laughs> oh, PH stands for Pindi. <laughs> oh, PH, <wow. laughs> oh, <P> Pindi. <laughs> let's, let's, let's bring it back. PH stands for Pindi. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Carry on. Are, are you calling him? Yeah, I'm calling PH. Oh, wow. Put him on speaker. Put him on hey, speaker. Hey, son. Hey, time. My man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> should, we, should we call him? I'll wait and do. Okay. Okay, let me call him. He, he'd answer your phone. Yeah. Okay, that's all over. Wait, that's actually. <laughs> okay, we're going to attach, we're going to connect to Bluetooth, and then we're going to call him. So why he, why are we attaching the Bluetooth? So that he can hear us here, but you're going to need to put on your headphones. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so that you guys can sort this out. Hopefully you guys... Oh, uh, don't start trouble between <laughs> Pindi and I. <laughs> no, we're not starting trouble. We are... Oh, man. Okay, so we're connected. Oh, he's actually the second hottest Pindi I know. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Pindu Kuala is the first one, and they shape the same from the waist down. Oh, wow. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Why is he not answering? 
Unless he thinks, he, that, maybe he thinks I owe him money. No, this is a sign of a successful DJ. Yo, I'm washing my teeth. I'll call you right now. You're brushing your sheesh. Mm. My man, <laughs> my, hold on, hold on. Uh, I'm with I'm with Trevor Gumbi here on the podcast. Hey, Tom mm. Shabujan. Yo, what's good? <laughs> no, I'm very good, man. It sounds like you're brushing your teeth with KFC gravy, but it's good. Um, <laughs> that, that's some thick ass toothpaste. <laughs> I'm on, the pod, I'm on the podcast here with Tato. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. And I just wow, wanted wow. to shout out that uh, I think it's amazing what you've done with your career, given the Thank fact you. that you have Down syndrome and you've been living with Down syndrome for so long. What you've done with your career is totally amazing. And but I don't know where you get the strength from, probably because of the special that. school you went to, Chapari. <laughs> But well done, Otab. Well done. I uh, appreciate it. I love you guys. Both of you guys. So, have so, so why do you laugh when I call him Pindi? What? Yeah, why is your name Pindi, Otab? <laughs> guys, don't worry about that. Marina, Marina, who Pindi, Otab? No, don't. Is that what PH stands for? Pindi. No. no. Hey, what's your name? Pindu <laughs> Kobe. Not the good version. Oh, Pindu Not the good version. Oh, your parents hated you. I'm done with you. How Pindu Kobe. Rejoice again. Don't try again, nigga. What? Rejoice again. Just call it a means rejoice again. My man, I love you. Thanks for taking my call. I apologize that Trevor Gumby is on the other end. <laughs> Are you done? Oh, Pindu Kobe. Now you've just ruined my relationship with Pierre. No, he'll be fine. Sorry, I don't. He'll be fine. Oh, Pindu Kobe. Oh, it's amazing. I can't do this. Oh, it's amazing. There's a lot of shit happening in the country. Yeah? Uh, load shedding, a Russian ship. We must arrest Putin. What are some of the things that are blowing your mind, either this week or generally in the country right now? Oh, man. Um, th some of the things that are blowing my mind is fine. Yeah. Every country in the world has problems, OK? Sure. Yeah. And we have quite a lot of problems, sure. OK? And our problems have affected us so much. Like, we don't know life without the problems of load shedding and now water. What has surprised me yeah. is not all of the wrong happening. Sure. My, my surprise comes with us, all of us, citizens, not doing anything mm. about it. Why are we not in the streets? Why are we not marching to the union buildings? Well, I'll take an Uber, but I, I would be there. <laughs> I would be there, you know? Come so, on. So are you saying Choose we're not angry enough? Do you still own a Botswana passport? I've got, yeah. That's why you're not fully invested in this thing. <laughs> Choose a side, Baba. It's either you are with us or you are with Botswana. Why can't I be with both? Uh -uh. Yeah? You can't be with Ukraine and then come and arrest Putin, yeah. Who do they think we are? <laughs> Name one cop who can get close to Putin. One cop. Sa Sergeant Kukubele. Sergeant blow, blow affair, anyone. They can't. Come on, guy. Come on. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, so what would you rather people do then? For, for instance, uh, just this week, uh, President Ramaphosa is in Hamanskral. Uh, you know, chances are he's going to get there and say he's surprised <laughs> or he's shocked because he's Maki. He's always surprised. Right. You know what I mean? What would you rather people do then? If we're not rioting in mass, mm. and and uh, but what happened to just vote differently then? Yeah, where, that's where, what where, I'm where, getting where, to. Where, where do, you, do you mind letting me I speak? I apologize. I apologize. Wow. <laughs> Get that out, Jan. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if we are not uh, going to make things uncomfortable for our uh, for our leadership, mm. m and when I say make it uncomfortable for them, I don't mean blocking the streets to people who are trying to go to work. Sure. Blocking their routes to work, making it impossible for them to enjoy the comforts of their uh, houses with uninterrupted electricity. Do something that affects them and not your fellow citizen. Isn't that voting? That then... All we can do is vote differently. Mm. But who do you vote for? Hey. 
Why don't you stand? Why don't Why I stand? Run? Why don't you run? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to vote for me. Come on, dog. Dude, the Cope got two seats. I'm sure you could get one. Aye. I've given up, Papa. When I was presenting friends like these after DJ Smoo, mm. I had so many catchphrases that I tried to get people to follow. Not a single catchphrase. Like which one? Like which uh, one? Uh, oh, I used to come out of the wings. Show is starting. Yeah. I come out to the applause. I'm like, I chew. And the audience was supposed to go, Pez Guenye. I thought it was brilliant. So I come out, I chew, Pez Guenye. Uh, and it was lovely then. And then I come to a, to a bride and I go, I chew. Uh, I bless you. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody wants to follow my trends. Maybe have a manifesto and not trends. Then people might follow that. <sighs> Tell me what you're going to do differently. Tell me how you're going to make my life easier. Instead of going, I chew. I chew and then what? Ah, true, mama way, what? Uh, eh? But you are the generation that came before us that should be doing it. I mean, Abu Tangabako, Nangu Trump is in parliament. Follow him. How many things do you have with that man? Come on. So it's a good start that Trump has finally made it into parliament. Uh, shout out Eugene, shout out EFF. So you're next. <laughs> Politics? No. I might open a church. Oh, yeah, this, it's easier money. And you get not and, to, and you get not to go to hell. Touch wood. Uh, I don't know. So I don't know. The, the, the Church of Gumbi. Okay, maybe there's something that we're not seeing, okay? Yeah. Because I doubt that these people are imbeciles, the people who are, who are in power. Maybe there's something that we are not seeing. What are their difficulties? We've never really had like a, a, a job appraisal of yeah. these people. We know what targets they're not meeting, no, but, but what are the frustrations of the office? Yeah, but Mr. President, remember, had said that there would be a deliverables uh, upon which they'll be judged, but we're still waiting for that. Where did he say this? Did he not say one of his first uh, speeches in Parliament? The one where that ministers would be held to account. I don't know. I and, we're I, still, I, and we're still waiting for that. Uh, but we're not the worst. Also, oh, it's one of those, or at least, Tina, we've got this. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, it is, it is. Because, uh, 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 fresh, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, I've been going through some things in my life mm -hmm. uh, where it's uncomfortable and it's, 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 it's a space I don't like being in. Sure. And when I speak about it to my friends, my friends are like, hey, you know, it's not only you. Mm. There's so many other people going through difficult times. Sure. You know? And then I say angrily to them, I don't, it doesn't make me feel better knowing that Tato is also going through a tough time. That sure. doesn't make me feel better knowing mm. that Trevor is not reaching what not, what not. You know? Mm. And then, then they're like, but what else can we do? Sure. You know? We're all in this. We're not in this together because. I'm thinking, hey, I'm, so, so I'm we're settling. So we must settle then. I'm, is what you say? How am I going to settle, dog? It's like I'm going through stuff. I tell Tato, and then Tato's like, oh shame. I feel bad, and gets into his RS3 and drives off. And then I'm waiting for my my Uber here. Your Uber's going to cost you 100 uh, bucks. My RS3 is going to cost me 10,000 rand a month. So you're actually better off. Yeah, but you have the 10,000. But maybe I don't. You see. Stop playing with my but, emotions. But, but you don't know that I have it. You assume I have it. You don't know that I'm not asking for Peter f to give me the money so I can pay Paul uh, the 10,000 for the RS3. Do you know how but, I know? But you do you know how I know that you do ask Peter and Paul? Yeah. Rosar. But. Because in St. Peter, you do a little prayer. <laughs> then you say, St. Paul, a little prayer, St. <laughs> Mary. But you've got the 100 Rand now to take the Uber. You see, so you're actually better off. Oh. You're oh. way better off. Oh, you are taking the glass half full, glass half empty kind of room. No, no, There's I'm taking... There's always a way to look I'm, I'm at I'm taking the, the less debt you're in, the better off you probably are, actually. Well, in okay. the long run. You're a smart man. You can actually sleep at night. Uh, good letting go of that bee farm. The, 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 the less people you, you owe. No, the bees are still there. The bees are still there, yeah, buzzing away. Not your farm. The bees can are... Can you just relax, please? It's yeah. not your farm. It's you can say, I used to mm -hmm. live with bees no more. Why not? You lost that in the divorce. I can't say I used to have. No, man, nothing was lost in the divorce. Th that house belongs to the kids. No, nothing was lost in the divorce. 
What a divorce did you have? A very bad one. <laughs> hey, Papa, my divorce lawyer was the worst. Oh, God, hey, that guy, you. I knew he was bad when he came to a meeting in checks and pants and formal shoes. I was like, yeah. His wife took everything from him, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. And you know how lawyers have got that bag on wheels, that leather bag on wheels? That big Dali, uh, oh, this that Dali guy, oh. case, yeah. This guy began a school bag. <laughs> it was on his shoulders. I was like, oh, this lawyer's going to cost me, dog. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and so far. Ish. <laughs> so I still own half of the bees. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, but just not the queen. <laughs> I have to find my own queen. <laughs> slick. That's hella slick, dog. What are you working on right now? Working what am I working on? <laughs> are you so, working on anything? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so I've got Gumbi Productions, right? And sure. we produced uh, our biggest show was Sober Companion okay. on SABC3 and then went to Netflix. And now... Um, we have uh, a few IPs from reality to um, uh, documentary to series uh, yeah. to feature films. Um, the climate right now is such that the broadcasters don't necessarily have the money to um, commission. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for AFPs. We're okay. looking for uh, private sector people who want to advertise. Mm -hmm. So that's the difficulty that I'm experiencing right now. The appetite is there. It's just the spending budgets from companies okay. that is kind of... Uh, mm. It's kind of not safe. But are you making money or are you still at chicken feet? Or have you moved up to pizza now? Damn. I don't know what I believe in because uh, I'm trying not to jinx things and stuff. I'm comfortable. Mm. Yeah. I hope I, I haven't jinxed my fortune yet. No, man. Just touch wood. It fixes everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy. I'm, hmm. I think that question has uh, thrown me because I don't want to sound like I'm a Buddhist or something, mm. but the things that were important to me back then mm -hmm. are no longer important to me. Things like what? What I've, the convertible, the sure, sure. living the life, the uh, the everything people see. Oh yes, yes. You know what I mean? Um, that's not important to me anymore. Mm. What's important is how I feel when I'm in my home. Sure. You know, and that is brilliant. I'm very happy. I've got a beautiful wife, I've got respectful kids, and I've got a beautiful home. Mm. That's all that matters. That uh, Fresh saw me pull up in my convertible Aston. It's neither here nor there. You know I own it, Aston, but I don't need to show you. And even if you don't know I own it, so what? Exactly. And even if you don't see it, so what? Yeah, material things are mm. not. Yeah. Mm. I'm actually planning my great escape. And my great escape is moving somewhere and live off the grid. No water bill, no electricity bill, and no one knowing my address. The only thing standing in my way now is my kids to finish the seventh grade. I've got two more kids mm. to pass seventh grade. After that, they are, they are, though. Jeez, they must go out there and make a plan. Get in! Yeah. Check. Yeah. Get in. Yeah. When your great grandparents were 13, they were hunting out there. Exactly. <laughs> Life expectancy was 12. <laughs> grandfather, grandfather of 17 yeah. died at the age of 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why did I imagine Alfred Dombella as the grandfather? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, but you can't take him hunting because you'll laugh while you're hiding from the lion. <laughs> <laughs> and you're all dead. Like, you can't take <laughs> Alfred Dombella anyway. Anyway, what would you like to be your legacy when people look back? That Trevor Gumby, that guy, that. What do you think that'll be? Wait, are you, are you going to pay for my parking? Because I didn't bring any coins. Uh, we'll pay for your parking. Thanks. My legacy, I yeah. think I would like to leave... Um, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I, I, I did it. Let, yeah. let's, go, let's go on to the next thing. Because this isn't permanent. I heard a quote mm. uh, by that extra hot lady, Aunt Klembali, sure. uh, where she... Was it her? Is this you hitting on her now? No, I okay. wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay. No, she's a colleague. And I'm married. Matter with you. Hey, baby. <laughs> Never stopped you before. <laughs> to be married. <laughs> My wife is watching this. That's why now. Reality. 
fuck. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, wa I want to say something profound, but yeah. it's honestly like, sure. this isn't it. Sure. Guys, stop fixating in this realm. Mm -hmm. We are spiritual beings uh, going through a human experience, okay? Sure. After this, you don't know what your parole is like. Sure. Because basically, we are on a prison colony right now, mm. okay? Because we are run by the lizard people. You said you don't want to be deep. Now you're being deep. No, no, it's just the truth about what the what life is. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We are serving out our different prison sentences on mm. this mm. prison colony called Earth. Mm. When our sentence is finished, we'll go back to our home planets and live under the rule of our lizard overlords. So for the lizard overlords that will remain on the planet when we're dead, what are they going to see on your tombstone? Abu Fader, love. What are they going to The ones see? who are here, Abu yeah. Fader. Sure. They are the audience. Tina is not a choose, young child. Sure. So Abu Fader, Abu Fader, because Bosch is here. Who are you? Utra. I am Utra. I don't know on the day. I want to put a man in a fool. I get a man in. Ah, I will not give this country report. And your people made me sit on the pillow because my ass is flat. That's body shaming. Uh, your earth is not like the your ass is not like the earth, so that's why we needed that. The earth's not flat. Exactly. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Trev, where do people find your social media? Uh, on social media. On social media. Yeah. Yeah. What do they look for? You know who I miss? Uh -huh. Our barber. I haven't used him in ages. Which one? The guy you use. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm with the barber. Yeah, such a great guy. I met him when he was in that shop on in North Riding. Oh yeah. You should bring him here and like, oh, he's such a great guy. Anyway, I uh, like. That's the one person I regret cheating on. Anyway, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Which one? But you know, TikTok, uh, oh, TikTok it's yes. all at Trevor Kump. All right. Trevor Man, thank you so much for hanging out with us. This is... Wow. What, what a week. What a week. This kid. Yeah. <laughs> really kicks welcome to the section of the show where we shout out africans doing great things there's a saying that when you put your kids gloves on you're being gentle well when our next kid puts his gloves on he's anything but gentle He's still a nice guy, though, which is why we'd like to give a wild welcome to the WBA Pan-African Middleweight, the African Boxing Union Junior Middleweight, and the IBO World Junior Middleweight Champion of the World. The champ is here. Let's get ready to rumble! Please make some noise for Rock Nap, brother. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Legend has it that your surname is Nap because most of your victories had guys taking a nap. Is that true? <laughs> Listen, that's funny. That's a funny story actually. That I always get that. I always get that said um, whenever I fight. Uh, yeah. People coming to me. Hey, it's nap time, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but you don't worry. I got you. So you're onto something there. Rock Nap. That's an interesting name. Tell us about your name. <laughs> So I was actually named after the battlefield of Rourke's Drift, oh, where wow. the English and the Zulu fought. A oh, lot of people wow. think that I was named after Mickey Rourke. Yes, yes, um, yes. I say that just to make it easier for people to understand. Not everybody knows the origination of Yes, Rourke's yes, Drift. yes. So that's quite a cool story to tell. And then do you know why they named you after the Battle of uh, Rourke's Drift? Um, I actually don't even know. Um, maybe it translates into what I do for a living, you know, with the battle and the war and stuff. Quite a quite a cool connection there. Absolutely. Um, my dad's actually English, so maybe that's why. My mom's South African. I don't know. So, 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 so it was a bittersweet name for him then? Yes, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Rock 101, where are you from? Who are you? I'm just a typical kid from, from Edenvale, yes. 1610. Um, born and raised there, lived there most of my life. Um, been back and forth between the UK and South Africa. Yeah. Um, I actually grew up in the UK from the age of 12, went yeah. to high school there, moved with my mom because obviously I've got parents that side, my mom's that side. Yes, yes. And um, yeah, just a simple kid from Edenville that likes to box, um, living the dream at the moment. When did boxing happen? So boxing happened originally for me at the age of nine years old. Yeah. Um, Who was the bully? 
It's funny you say that. That's exactly how I started, yeah. I got bullied and picked on badly as a kid. Yes. Um, prime bully victim, freckles, buck teeth, big ears, small scrawny, intimidated yes. kid. So I got bullied um, by many, many people, many people. And um, yeah, my dad saw this at, at, at one stage and saw that I did nothing and took me to the local boxing gym. Quite odd from getting picked on at school mm -hmm. uh, and getting, you know, punched and kicked and whatever and then to a boxing gym where I got punched in the face and you know to a degree bullied there or so until I got better at it yes and um yeah that was that was my first stint with boxing it wasn't anything serious just learned how to defend myself and that's how to start that that bug bit there, there's a kid that uh, used to bully me when I was in grade in fact I was in crash um, I was four years old so they used to steal my lunch so whenever we got into the the school bus um, these kids would steal my lunch. They were in grade one or grade two. Yeah. And for me, the payback was giving him a gig to take pictures at my daughter's uh, party. Wow. Um, because he used to bully me, but I was like, I'm going to pay you, though. I'm going to show you. I I'm going to pay you. Yeah. For me, uh, you know, I'm still upset about it because I loved food. <laughs> like, how dare you take As, food? Yeah, I, I second you on that. Have you ever met any of your bullies from uh, back when you were a kid? I have. Yeah. But... I don't. I think they did recognize me, but they pretended not to recognize me. Um, the one bully I remember, he was. I don't know how I allowed myself to get bullied by him. He's such a scrawny and small person, but yes. just it happened like that. Maybe because he was louder, because yes. often bullies are loud also. Yes. And and they get into your head. Yes, definitely. And that's yeah. exactly what happened. And yeah. I remember I saw him at the one petrol station at that time. And I was standing right behind him in the queue. Yeah. And he like looked back, but like I looked at him, I was like, I know this guy. And as soon as he looked at me, I knew exactly who it was. But looked at me like a, he, he turned away as if I wasn't there immediately. Yes, yes. Didn't look in my direction at all. And I wasn't going to be faulty when I saw him. I was just going to say, hey, how are you, Lekka? Mm. And I know for a fact he sees what I do because there's people that I'm very close with that he knows and I'm telling you the word has gotten back to him. So he was very chip still, very quiet, yeah. humble pie, you know. Not ready to catch hands. No, definitely <laughs> not. Definitely not. You know, with, with martial arts, um, often martial arts is more about not fighting. Mm. Mm. You know, a lot of people think uh, martial arts is about fighting, mm. but martial arts is also about control. It's, 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 it's about, in the event that I have to fight, I know what to do, but I mustn't be ready to fight. But the impression about boxers is, you guys are always ready for a roll. Yeah. How, how true is that? Ready to roll. Yeah. Um, look, I can't speak on, others, on other behalves, but myself, I'm, I do boxing because I love boxing. As yeah. you just said martial arts, it's in the word, it's an art. Yes. Right? Um, yeah, you get fighters that love it because they love to be that boykey that wants to bang and fight and that. Sure. I'm very calm, very placid, easygoing. Um, obviously, I switch on when I need to because it's my job. As yeah. you are a professional, what you sure. do, I am a professional in what I do also. And again, I can't be ready to roll all the time because sure. of the repercussions. But it helps to be able to stand your own if you need to. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> and and the thing is, it's like when, when you have such a skill set and yeah. you have put in so much time learning that, there's a responsibility that goes with it. Yeah, because your hands are weapons now. But that's exactly what they say. So you yes. have to be very careful. And, and again, boxing doesn't make me. I make boxing. Sure. I am completely separate human being than what I am to the to the boxing ring and yeah. what I do. So sure. it goes hand in hand. But yeah, I'm very placid, very chilled. But listen, I don't have only hands, only fans. But I've got only hands. So if anybody wants it, they can get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no need to subscribe. No need to subscribe. <laughs> subscribe to these hands for free. <laughs> But you've also been through great boxing hands on your journey. Um, you know, tell us about that. Yeah, I have. I've actually, I've, I've had the pleasure of working with so many amazing people. Yeah. Um, I've had opportunity to go to the UK and box. I saw some great stuff there. I've seen quite a bit for, for my tender age and yeah. experience. How old are you, by the way? I'm 25. I've yeah. just turned 25, so I'm still a... You're a youth, you're youth for another 10 years. So. Yeah, well, I hope so. I hope so. With this game, I hope so. Um, but yeah, I've worked with, I mean, my first trainer, a guy called Mimo Spirito in Edenvale, the yeah. heart of Edenvale. Sure. Um, I started with him, and then from there, I moved over to um, the UK. I got an opportunity to go and fight in the UK. Um, great experience, great lessons learned, uh, met great people, saw great yeah. things. Um, I was in the presence of world champions, which was, I was in awe. Sure. You know, so I got to see how they work, see how mm. things are done. And then I came back and I paired up with my now trainer, Vusim Tolo, from um, Durban. He hails from Durban. And um, he's synonymous with the boxing world. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of, if not the best trainer in the game. And I'll say that because I love him dearly. He's my trainer. Mm -hmm. That's my homie, that. And um, yeah, ever since then, we've, we've been on a tear. Um, 
I've obviously worked with multiple champions, inspiring mm -hmm. um, with trainers. Give me a bit of advice. Yeah, I've seen I've seen quite a bit, which is which is you know it's nice to to have that experience under my belt. You're classified as a junior middleweight. Yes. And and often when we talk junior middleweight, you have an image of an average muscle structure. But you're not average. No. Um, so also people think junior middle means that there's a difference between junior and senior that I'm not yeah. quite there yet. Sure. It's just the name of the division. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a few names for the division. Light middleweight, super sure. welterweight. Mm. Um, so it, those are all the same division? It's all the same division. It's okay. got nothing to do with age. What are the different divisions, by the way? So from heavyweight, what's next down? So... From heavyweight, there's a new division that's actually just broken out. Yeah. Uh, we've got heavyweight, bridge weight, light heavyweight, cruiser weight, super middleweight, middleweight, then it's me, junior middleweight. So there's quite a few divisions above me and then still below me, which you've got guys that are like, they are absolutely tiny, come up to my shoulder, but they are little firecrackers. Those are yeah. little, little yeah. pieces of dynamite. Often you read about some boxers who'd want to go up a division or down a division. Yes. How important is it for you to stay where you are or do you have dreams of going up a division i definitely have dreams of going up a division a few divisions yeah. um but i put the work in and i've and i've earned my spot where i'm at in my division now in my respective division mm -hmm. work my way up to number one in africa number one in south africa and number 12 in the world which is for me i didn't think i would ever 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 get that far but i have so now i'm holding on tight with both hands i'm gonna run with it who are you fighting for your african title so the next fight isn't a title fight. No, no, the pre, uh, to get to be get to number one. To get to number one, I fought a, a very, very tough and rugged competitor in Brandon Taser, who okay. hails from Durans. Okay. Um, also, it was a South African fight. It was a rivalry. It was like yes. it was a very big domestic fight. Yes. And um, yeah, that was a, a war from round one to round twelve. Um, they say that that's the best fight in the last. 30 to 50 years of, of South African boxing. You are kidding me. Yeah, I've got I've got some cool people Take compliments. Take waking up that day because you understood what's at stake. Yeah. It's the African, you know, you, you want to be number one in Africa. Mm. It's a bitter rivalry, like you said. It's from another stable. So it's everything that should be in a movie. Yeah, the makings of a movie, for sure. Take us through that day. I will say this, though. Yeah. The title wasn't even on my mind. You know, being number one wasn't in my mind. So we had history because there's a bit of a rivalry there. Yes. I lost to him in 2019. He stopped me in the seventh round with a Jeez. pearl of a body shot. And um, obviously we went, both went our separate ways. And the rematch got scheduled and we knew it was at stake. Yes. I wasn't interested in the belt. I wasn't interested in the position. It was redemption. Yes. Redemption for myself and for my people and honor. Honor for yeah. myself. Yeah. And it was quite a bit, it was a bit of a blur. It was a bit of a blur where I was in autopilot. I remember being on autopilot from the time I started cutting weight for the weigh in. Yeah. When I made weight to walking out to the ring, it was a blur. I so, so, so the weigh in, you know, you know, typically in the movies, often the weigh in is dramatic. Yes, yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of cat calling, like, um, I, slept, of trash I slept with your mom. Yeah. How was your weigh in? It was intense. It yeah. was, like you say, it was, it was movie quality. Um, Big, big rivalry, hugely intense. So when when that is happening, I'm, I'm just trying to get into you know your headspace mm. at that stage. Mm. Are you nervous? Are you excited? Are you angry? Are you cucking your pants? It's What's game happening? Time. It's game time. Yeah, I'm looking at a man that wants to take my head off and vice versa. Yeah, there's a there's a degree of honor and respect that is there, but at the end of the day, we are here to hurt each other. Sure. We know what's on on the line and. Sure. As much as there was you know hooping and hollering in the crowds, it was intense. It was like that. Myself and Brandon facing off was like a bubble. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything around me. I just saw him. I was locked into his eyes. And it's, it's game time. It's yeah. game time. Yeah. You can see. I'm trying to look at what I can see in his eyes. Yes. Trying to find a kink. Trying to find a bit of a, you know, nothing. Solid. Like concrete. And I knew I was in for it. I was like, okay, well, we got to put in work now. Let's do it. And he's won before. So this is. Yeah. 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 So he wanted to make an example of me. Yeah. So. A very intense in f uh, face off my manager and his manager having words betting yeah. um our supporters you know cheering for us like sure, it was sure. it was intense probably the most intense way in i've ever experienced yeah. okay so it's 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 fight day uh, it's it's fight day fight day you you arrive and then what happens there so this is i'll explain how fight day goes so yeah. i don't really sleep that great the night before yeah um i'm well rested but i'm you know 
really I'm thinking about the fights I'm manifesting sure um, I start my first session off on a, on, on fi- fight day with a power up session where I do my strength and conditioning we get the body switched on we wake up so you do a gym session on the day of the yeah, fight yeah so nothing intense it's just to it's, it's, it's like lighting a stick of dynamite that's basically what it is you get the body switched on yes. primed ready for what you're going to do in the evening wake it up because you don't want to go into the ring and that cold that the first time your heart rate spikes yes so we get ready we literally prime the body for war um, get a sweat going, get all the nutrition and nutrients that's been put back in my body, get it to move. And then, uh, yeah, we switch on. I, I typically say, I, I take it as a normal day. Sure. Obviously, it's not a normal day, but I treat it like a normal day like I would every other day where I'll go see my family, I'll go see my dad, I'll go see my old man, make sure he's okay. I'm the one that's fighting, but I make sure he's okay. Do you pray by any chance? I do. Yeah. I do. I do pray. Um I'm not, a, I'm not big on praying, but when I feel the need to pray, I do okay. pray. Okay. Not just for me, but for my opponent, for the team. And so, like, may I not kill this man, Lord? <laughs> <laughs> or please, Lord, don't get me, let me get hurt this one, please. You know? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's an element of, of that praying, and it also just brings me peace, and sure. it just makes me feel a lot more tranquil. What song do you walk into? Multiple different ones. Okay. I like to walk into a song that makes me feel ready to go but I also like to get the crowd going so I think of a song that'll get the crowd going because okay. I feed off of that energy so so what's your current song and please don't tell me Eye of the Tiger <laughs> oh <laughs> damn I was going to come out to that with the next fight you got to have a bit of tease in there you know it's funny you say that I actually yeah. people often chant my name as Rocky Balboa not Rocky Balboa yeah, Rocky, Rocky Balboa yeah. so I think Eye of the Tiger will be please, fitting please don't tell me you're dating Adrian <laughs> Adrian <laughs> um no, I come out to multiple different songs. Yeah. Uh, so on that day, what song were you walking out to? Do you remember? I think I came out to Icon by Jaden Smith. Oh, yes. I remember. Oh, yes. Icon. It was kind it's, of a it's, an epic, it's an epic tune. Yeah, it yeah. was a bit of a creed set up, a bit yes. of a, we, this is who I am. Yes. Do not forget it. I'm yeah. going to show you. Yeah. I'm here to remind you of who I am. Sure. And I remember the crowd was, when I was walking to the ring, I remember the crowd was even singing it. I was like... That's what I wanted this for. That's what I... So I, f- I fed off of that energy. And uh, yeah, we went to work. I almost got stopped in the first round even. He hit me with a beautiful Perla overhand right. Um, he what? disguised it beautifully. What, to the face? Yeah. Jeez. On the button, on the button. Um, I thought he was going to go downstairs to the body. And you could see in the slow motion, I braced for Also, it. you got ready for I the body shot. For it, and then at the last second, he came over the top and I ate it. And the last time you lost to him was to a body shot. Body shot. So, so I was... So you're ready for body shot. I was w- awake for that body shot. Switched it up, came over the top of the pearl on the chin and shook me to my boots. Fell on the ropes. The ropes kept me up. Sat in my guard while he offloaded on me. Yes. And then obviously I got my composure together and then I started pressing him forward. Yeah. And um, he's training that they knew that I would do that. And that, that set the tone of the fight. The minute he let that big right hand go, that set the tone of the fight. Then yes. it was a carnage from round one up until the 12th and final round. It was, it was mayhem. So before the judges read the scores out, what were the crowd feeling about that fight? This was the most intense feeling and and atmosphere I've ever experienced as a fighter. I've been fighting at Empress Palace and on Super Sport and Golden Gloves for a few years now. And every round ended, the crowd got louder and louder and louder. Yeah. Obviously, separation between his fans and my fans. Yes. And with the organization that we fought for, the ABU title, the African Boxing Union title, um, every four rounds they call out the scorecards so they tell you who's ahead oh what, yeah, so yeah, like there's so. no pressure <laughs> exactly and I remember distinctly knowing that going to the fight that that was one of the things I needed to remember so as soon as I would hear that intercom go I would let something go I'd give him something to deal with so he yes, couldn't hear it yes, yes. you know what I'm saying because I don't want him to hear it and think okay he's good and get the momentum oh yes and as I say, the fight broke out and it just got even more intense and more intense. And the crowd was just, every round, the whole arena was on their feet. People were jumping on tables, going crazy. It was it was nuts. So it was another day in Edenville. <laughs> Basically, I was like, oh, these are my people. They came out to the, they came out to, to the fights. Lovely, you know. All the Edenville boots carrying on. We show you how we get down. <laughs> so, now, you are African champion. Yes. Uh, you are the IBO champion. Yes what's next though like uh, where, because the last i read you were supposed to be defending in june but that's been moved yes yeah so i've been put on a new trajectory a new path um we're looking to go hopefully the wbc route that's mm-hmm. the creme de la creme that's the number one yeah about that yeah um they were trying to put it on for for september because that's when the fight has been moved 
Um, unfortunately, I don't know if that's going to happen. So December looks like I'll be fighting for that belt. And once I get into that ranking, we A for away. Okay, so who are you supposed to fight um, end of June that's been moved? I'm supposed to fight the same guy, okay. the same guy, same opponent. Everything's the same, same card. We've just moved it to a further date. Okay, so is that a good or a bad thing that has been moved? That's a good thing. It just gives me more time to prepare to hand out an ass whooping. That's, that's basically But does it, it not also postpone other goals that you might have, though, that now you have to wait for this to happen much later? Um, not necessarily, not yeah. necessarily. I've got a phenomenal team in place that obviously have my best interests at heart and sure. are taking me on a, a very strong stable route mm. towards the number one goal which is becoming a world champion yes um so essentially whatever my promoter says this is the good idea we do that then you know they put someone in front of me i say okay cool yeah what date let's go are you making money boxing i am i'm very blessed and very grateful to say that i am making money so is it so is it a, are you making a living or do you still yes. have to have a little nine to five no i'm, I'm a full-time fighter yeah. i do have a coaching business on the side um in, in fact i'm going to be coming to your uh, gym on monday for a it. session yeah so i'll see you monday at 9 9 9, 9, 9 a.m 9 a.m shop yeah 9 a.m shop why should parents encourage the little ones to take a boxing i wouldn't say just boxing i would say all forms of martial arts yes um i'm not biased to boxing it instills a certain sense of self-belief, yeah. confidence, and discipline sure. from an early age. Mm. When you learn that, it sets you up for, for the rest of your life, I believe. Mm. Um, you know, it gives it gives strength to the weak, uh, confidence to the shy. Um, it gives you a whole different perspective and a different personality. I've developed my confidence and, and my just my attitude through boxing, sure. you know, to tackle everything in a person, my personal life and in my boxing life differently mm -hmm. because of boxing. So sure. I definitely encourage people to, you know, put their kids through some sort of MMA yeah. um, background, whether it's jits, boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, you name it. It'll instill good behavior, discipline and respect. You mm -hmm. learn respect at an early age from it. And you learn to dispense respect when you need to. Well, that's it. You, you, you do, That's exactly it. 100%. You, that's it. Yeah. The more you F around, the more you'll find out. Exactly. Fuck around and find out. That's it. Um, now, we're running out of time, so um, I've got a couple of questions that I need to ask before we let you go. Of course. Uh, most underrated boxer, currently and in history? Locally or... It's up to you. Bro. Worldwide. It's your list. Yo. Most underrated fighter, I would yeah. say, of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, people forget him, a guy called Kevi, Kelly Pavlik okay. from the States. Okay. What, what was it about Kevi? He was just such a class boxer. Long, rangy, crisp very very dangerous so fighting. what what year period is this what era? this is the 2000s in the 2000s. 2000s so where is he now i don't know yeah he's fallen off the face of the earth when they retire they go and they sail off in the sunset sure. live their lives best pound for pound boxer you that's a good one yeah pound for pound right now i would say canelo alvarez okay canelo alvarez that's my idol sure um my favorite pound for pound if i had it my way it's not even pound for pound but he's my favorite is a guy called arturo gatti yes, yes, that's why yes, i yes, try yes. and style my heart off of my you yeah. know my 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 overall style after sure. the heavyweight boxer of all heavyweight boxers of all time number one ollie, ollie you, uh, you can't beat him and Maybe still just, and still not just from what he was as a fighter but what he was as a person and and in the way he walked his life yes sir yes sir in relationships um, often coaches say no sex before game day yes how does it work in boxing is sex well, good or bad for you women weaken legs so there's many theories on it yes the number one theory is that women weaken legs some guys abstain for eight weeks you some okay. guys six weeks so you walk in there with blue balls my man you are ready to yeah You're ready to rumble. i can't do it i can't do it <laughs> yeah you're ready to rumble i can't do it i can't do it but they say that that's women weaken legs and it's not that you know, sleeping with your wife or your girlfriend will weaken your legs. It just makes you lazy. You know, you make excuses not to go to train. Yeah, you that, lose focus. That, that, That's that, what it is. Post-nut laziness. Oh, my man, that'll crush you. <laughs> that'll crush you because what, what comes with that is a good chow and you don't need to be doing that. A good uh, a good session with your wife and yes. a sleep and food. Done. Okay, so for you then, how long do you abstain for before a fight? I probably go for about four weeks. That's the most. Four I can weeks? Do. Yeah, four weeks is the most. I'll never be a boxer. It actually isn't that difficult because I'm so wild, yes. wired to train and my mind is on cutting weight, training, performing, you know, being the best I can be. I don't even think about it. Yes, sir. Until my wife comes next to me, my girlfriend comes near me and I'm yeah. like, hey, sh sh move out. Go to your, to your mom, to your mom. Like, not now. Not to your parents. Now. Yeah. Bye bye. After the fight, though, let me tell you something. It's game time. Sure. <laughs> it's game time. I'll go 12 rounds in the ring and I'll go another 12 rounds at home. And still. <laughs> still.
That's it, hundred percent. How do you feel about the fact that the biggest hype in boxing right now is over a YouTuber? I'm all for it. I'm all for it. It brings a different demographic of fans to the sport. Sure. Um, this is a time in the, the day and age we live in now. So we have to get with the times. You have to, you know, take it. Uh, and and, and, and it, if ever it. boxing needed hype, it's now actually. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. They have literally the YouTubers have put boxing on the map. Yeah. And I can respect it because they're not yet taking it lightly. They are dedicating themselves. They are working. They've they become are, athletes. They have become athletes. They've lived the sport. It's not like they're messing around. And sure. They are walking the walk and talking the talk. So I've got it. nothing but respect for it. Where do people find Rock Nap on social media? You can find me on Instagram at, uh, at Rock underscore Nap. Facebook, Rock Nap. Instagram, Rock underscore Nap. Very simple, straightforward. There you can see all my preparation. But then again, it's not everything. simple, straightforward because your name is not just Rock. Rock. How do you spell Rock? R-O-A-R-K-E underscore K-N-A-P-P. Yes, sir. That's how you get hold of me. Number one boxer on the continent right now in the middleweight division, right? Junior middleweight division. Junior middleweight. He's the number one on the continent. If you're ready for a nap, you better get training. <laughs> get training or you will take a nap. Brother man, uh, enough, nothing but love and respect for you. Thank you so much. I'll see you on Monday at your gym. Oh, yes. I need to get rid of this. Oh, yes. And I'm trusting that you'll help me with that. We'll work. We'll but like you said, you don't do boxer size. You train boxing. Strictly boxing. Whatever I've learned over the years, I take that and I try and give that over to the person that I'm working with. I teach you how to fight. That's that's my goal. All right. So we'll get you some hands for sure. All right. If you're ready to catch some hands, you're yeah. to find me on Monday. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the number one junior middleweight of the continent and the IBA, IBO junior middleweight of the world. Youth world champion. Under, 24, under 25 world champion, yes. Jeez. Yeah. We're out of here. It's nap time. Hey, can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag W-A-W. What a week. And on that knockout tip, we are done. Shout out to Amp Studios for housing us, the Africa Podcast Network, for getting us out there. Pez Zulu Works for the cinematography and our audio engineer for making us sound good. Artist the Flow Fraser. Our guest today, Rock Knapp and comedian Trevor Gumbi, creative director Kuvesh Mohan and show producer Gelezo Mudisa King. Email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Have a great week in spite of yourselves. Hey, can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag W-A-W, what are we?